the Confederate retreat comes from Yorktown through Williamsburg and as the cavalry is having their engagement on the night of the 4th of May 1862 um, some of the Virginia units like uh, Ewell and uh, Jeff Stewart are occupying central forts for Magruder and the central forts on the road leading into Williamsburg but you got this whole line of forts across the peninsula uh, 12, 13 forts uh, and what happens is Johnston makes a decision which is kind of a uh, Historians have debated this for years on what he was thinking. But Johnson makes a decision he's going to turn around about a third of his army to hold off the Union troops which are coming from Hampton. And what he does is he orders, and this is the silly part, he orders um, Longstreet's division, who has already passed through Williamsburg, to occupy the forts. And he orders the, the units like uh, Ewell and the Virginia units who are in the forts to leave town in the retreat. So literally, you've got on the night of the 4th of May, you've got units turning around outside of Williamsburg to the west and coming back through Williamsburg, while units here picking up out of the forts and trying to get through Williamsburg all at the same time. And when that happens, the units under Longstreet's division, which occupy this line of forts, they're from Georgia, uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, there are some Virginians here, but they know the area about as well as anybody from New York or Maine or, or Wisconsin. And so therefore, Longstreet literally doesn't know that these forts are here. He doesn't know how far the line extends, and he's only occupying the very center portion of that line. That's why this fort, Fort Redout Number 14, and going on down, they're unoccupied because the Confederates that are holding the line don't know that they're even here to be used. As the battle is developing, uh, slaves come in, uh, African Americans come into Union lines and say, oh, there's a road which you can use to get around to behind the Confederates. And Baldy Smith, General, General Smith um, sends uh, Hancock in this direction with several regiments to try and exploit to see if it's true. And he comes down the road to the name of the road. Uh, I don't know. Do you know the name of the road at that time? It's, the road, it's one of the roads going to Yorktown. But he comes down the road. There's the mill pond and the dam. Uh, Custer says that they can get over the dam. He leads the way. Hancock uh, follows him with his regiment and they find that this end, as I was saying before, that this end of the Confederate line is empty. On the morning of the 5th, the, 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 the uh, Federal forces pressed the uh, Confederates so close that they had to stop and fight in order to hold, their, hold them back, in order to get their, their, their ammunition and their wagon trains out of the way between here and Richmond. Well, I, I went on the battlefield the next day after the battle, and there wasn't a, there wasn't a, a hospital or anything of the kind here to take care of the wounded, and the Confederate and the uh, and the Yankee Federals were all put in a barn down near where Purple Rudder stands now. And my father went down, he heard that there was some, some of them were suffering there, and he took his carriage and went down and after some of the, bring up some of the wounded soldiers to his house. He went down there and... Uh, federal soldiers or... Federal, he went down there and they were there, he brought up Confederate soldiers. And the federal soldiers, the federal forces took care of their men as, as well as they could. They took care of back on both sides. But it, it was no, nothing, no hospital or anything at that time. Where did they bury the Confederate soldiers? They buried a lot of them right in between the Baptist Church and the Brick Hotel. And they were afterwards taken up after the war, taken up by the mains and carried down to the cemetery.